Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we started adding in our new State Machine class, and we created a basic instance of our State Machine in our battle scene to validate everything's working. And so now that we have our basic structure in place, we're going to go ahead and create the various states for our battle scene and connect all of our code. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will be also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to transition over to our battle scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start defining our states that we'll be using for our battle scene. So to do that, we're going to make a new variable. So we'll have const, and we're going to call this battle states. And this will be an object that we're going to freeze, so we can't modify it. And so we'll have intro. And so our intro is we're going to set up everything that's needed for our battle. Uh, so let's be like creating all of our game objects, anything that needs to be done uh, before, before we start showing animations. Um, after our intro, what we're going to have is we're going to have our pre battle info and so in this state this is where we're going to show our character animations and so they're going to animate onto the screen and like our foe is going to appear um, and just all the animations tied to that and have the health bars kind of uh, animate in um, after we do that then we need to go ahead and transition to where we bring out our monster uh, so we'll transition to bring out monster and so this is where we're going to bring out the player's monster and we're going to say go iguana knight and we'll just have them animate onto the screen with their health bar once we do that we now need to transition to where we wait for player input uh, so this is where we now show our battle menu and the player uh, can go ahead and interact and choose what they would like to do so they could choose between fight item switch and flee once the player has actually selected something to do, we're going to go ahead and handle that. Uh, but for our use case, we're going to assume that they've selected attack. So once they select that attack, uh, what we need to do is we need to transition to enemy input. And so for our enemy input, this is where the enemy would be able to choose their attack. Uh, for the time being, we're just going to have it default to the first attack, but this is where we could add in logic for like a very simple AI. Um, and we could have our monsters do different things depending on that AI type. Once we have both of the input from the player and the enemy, then we enter into our battle state. And so this is where we're going to determine what happens. So if you're switching a monster, uh, who attacks first, how much damage is done, uh, everything like that will be determined uh, in this state. So we'll have our battle state. After our battle state, we're going to transition to our post-battle state. So this is where we're going to check to see if any of the monsters have uh, died, uh, if the player ran away from the battle successfully, um, if they switched monsters, anything like that. So we'll have our post-attack check state. And after that, then we're going to have two other states. And so these will be tied to if the battle has finished or the players ran away. Uh, so if the player has successfully uh, knocked out the enemy monster or if the player gets knocked out and they have no other monsters, we would finish the battle. And then this would put us in the finish state. Also, if the player successfully runs away, we would be finished with our battle and we need to transition to our world scene. Um, finally, we'll have a flee attempt state, and so this is when the player tries to run away from battle. Uh, this state will have the logic for checking if they're able to run away. Um, so, like, if this, is a, if this is a mandatory battle they can't run away from, we would have checks there. Um, if we have random logic for determining if they can or not, we would have that logic here. All right, and so now that we have our initial state names, what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and fix our object real quick so we have our values for each of these. All right, and then so once we have our battle states, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a state for our state machine for each of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new method at the bottom of our class. And we're going to call this create battle state machine. And so inside this method, this is where we'll create our state machine instance. And then this is where we'll actually create each of our states. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and copy this method. We'll come back up to the our create method at the bottom when we create our initial state machine. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do, we're going to go ahead and call our method. 
And we're just going to copy this logic here from our state machine before, and we're going to place it down in our method. So then what we'll go ahead and go ahead and do is let's get rid of our on enter. And we're just going to go ahead and add our states with no on enter functionality for the time being. All right, so we're going to have intro. After intro, we're going to go ahead and have our pre battle uh, info. And so what we'll do to make this easier is we're going to go ahead and reference our variable that we created. So we'll have our battle states. We're going to have info intro. And then we'll have our pre battle info and we'll have our battle. And then what we'll do is we're just going to copy this go ahead and paste it here. And so after our pre battle info, we're going to go ahead and have our bring out monster. Then we'll have our player input. And then we're going to go ahead and have our enemy input. And then finally, we'll have our battle. And then after our battle, we'll have our two uh, special states. So we'll have our flee attempt and we will have our finished. And then finally, after we define all of our states, we want to go ahead and start our state machine. I'm just going to add a comment for that. So we'll start the state machine. All right, and we'll go ahead and save. All right, so now that we have our initial states defined, we need to go ahead and add in the logic for what we want each of our states to actually do and be responsible for. So this is going to be adding our on enter method for each of these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this real quick as our template. We'll add it to each one. And then what we'll do is let's go ahead and add our logic for our intro state. So in our intro state, um, this is where we're going to wait for our scene to set up and for any scene transitions to finish uh, before we start bringing out our monsters. Uh, so we're just going to add a comma here. So wait for any scene setup and transitions to complete. And so for the time being, we're just going to simulate this by using our delayed call method from our phaser timer. And we're just going to have 500 milliseconds just so we have a small delay before we transition to our next scene. Um, but then later on, we'll replace this with actual logic for checking if our scene is fully uh, created and set up and ready to go. And so once all of that logic's done, this is where we're going to go ahead and transition. So we'll set our state to our battle states. And we're going to go ahead and transition to our pre-battle info. So then once we get into our pre-battle info state, what we're going to want to do is we're going to wait for our enemy monster to appear on the screen. So we'll wait for enemy monster to appear on the screen. And we'll notify the player about the wild monster. All right, so what we'll want to do, we're going to want to go ahead and update the text on our battle menu to notify the player that the enemy monster has appeared. Uh, so to do that, we're going to reference our battle menu. And we're going to go ahead and use our update info pane messages and we'll wait for input. And so for our message, we will say a wild and we'll reference our foe. So our active enemy monster name appeared. And then what we'll do is in our callback, once that text has been shown, what we want to do is wait uh, for our text animation to finish. Um, so we're going to do wait for text animation to complete and move to next state. And so for the time being, we don't have the animation. So what we'll do is we'll use our delayed call. We'll do 500 milliseconds and we'll do our callback. And what we'll do is once that's all done, we're going to do our battle state machine we'll set our state and we're going to set it to our bring out monster state all right and then so after we bring out our monster what we're going to want to do is uh, we'll wait for the player's monster to appear on the screen and then notify the player about the monster and so to do that, uh, what we'll do is we're going to do our battle menu and we'll do our update info pane message way for our input. Uh, so for our message, we're going to say go 
and we'll have our active monster. So we'll have our active player monster dot name. Then in our callback, what we'd want to do is we'd wait for our text animation to finish. So we're going to copy this here, paste that here. And then we'll go ahead and do our, we'll also go ahead and simulate that with our delayed call. So we're going to copy that logic as well. Um, but now we're going to transition to player input. So then what we want to do is inside our player input state, this is where we'll go ahead and uh, show our main battle menu. Uh, so instead of do that in our create method, we're going to do that here. So let's jump up to our create method. We're going to go ahead and copy our show main battle menu and remove it. Then in our player input, we'll go ahead and show our main battle menu. So then what we'll do is after we do our main battle menu, we want to go ahead and wait for the player to provide input. And then we go ahead and transition to our enemy input. And so right now we have it tied to this handle battle sequence uh, method. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy all of this logic in here and let's go ahead and get rid of this method. Instead, what we'll do is we'll come down to our battle method. And in our battle method, what we're going to do is we'll place that logic. All right, and then so for our enemy input, what we'd want to do is we'd actually want to pick a random move. So we'll pick a random move for the enemy monster. And in the future, implement some type of AI behavior. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a to do to add this feature later. And what we'll do for the time being is we're just going to go ahead and transition to our battle state. So we're going to go ahead and just copy this line here. And we're going to go ahead and do battle just so we get everything uh, connected and working. So then what we need to do is we need to come back up to our update method. And so instead of going to our handle battle sequence, instead what we're going to want to do is transition uh, to one of our states. So what we'd actually want to do is now that we have our player input, we want to transition to our enemy input state. All right, if we come over to our scene, we should be able to go ahead and test. Uh, so we are in our pre-battle info, we hit space, we go ahead and go to bring out monster, we hit space, and we go ahead and go to player input. So now if we provide our input, we transition to enemy input, uh, but then we never transition to our battle sequence. Uh, so what's happening is we're building up our state queue uh, faster than we can transition all our states. So what we need to do is in our update method, we need to go ahead and call the update method on our state machine. Uh, so what we're going to do is at the top of our method, we're going to do our battle state machine. We'll call our update method. And then that way it's constantly being updated. So we can clear that queue. And now if we try testing again, what should happen is we should get to the point where we select our attack. You see the enemy selected their attack. We go to battle. We now use our slash attack. They attack us, comes back, and then we should take our damage. Perfect. All right, so now that we see that our logic is working for our state machine, we just need to wrap up a few more of our states. So let's go ahead and jump down to our battle uh, state. And so right now we're going to our player attack method. So if we jump up to our player attack method, we should not need to change anything because all we're doing is we're slaying some text, delayed call, we're taking damage, we're going to enemy attack, which is what we want for the battle. But then in enemy attack, we're going to this post battle sequence check method but we don't actually want to go to that method directly. Uh, instead, we'd want to go to our post attack check uh, state. So we're going to replace this with our battle state machine, and we're going to set our state, and we'll have our battle states, and we're going to go to our post attack check state. We'll still return early. Then if we go ahead and take damage, instead of going to the post check, we're going to go ahead and go to our same state. So we'll go ahead and do that here. And then so what we need to do is now we need to go ahead and go to that state and add in that logic. So if we come down to our states. Oh, and so we actually didn't add that state. So what we need to do is let's copy this logic here and we'll go ahead and add in our post attack check. And so inside here, this is where we'll go ahead and call our post battle sequence check method. Uh, so if we come back, let's go ahead and just paste that in. So we'll do our private method. 
And then what we need to do is we need to actually transition uh, to the appropriate state. So what we'll do is we'll come up to that method and we just need to go ahead and modify some of our logic. Uh, so in our post battle sequence check, if we have have finished the round, we don't want to transition to the next scene. Instead, we want to transition to our finished state. So what we're going to do, let's, let's copy this. We're going to replace this with our finished state. Same thing if we faint, we'll go ahead and go to our finished state. Otherwise, what we want to do is go back to our player input state. So then that way we can stay in our state machine. So we're going to go back to player input and we'll repeat until we get to the end. So then finally, what we need to do is if we come down to our states, we need to add in our finished state. So in our finished state, all we need to do is we'll call our transition to our next scene state. And then in our flea attempt state, what we'll do is we're just going to add some logic. Uh, we'll, we'll just add a message that you got away safely. We'll assume they uh, ran away. Uh, so we're going to do this and we'll do our battle menu and we'll do update info messages and wait for input. And what we'll do is we'll do you got away safely. And we'll provide our callback. And so inside our callback, all we're going to do is go to our finished state. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just copy this logic here. Go ahead and paste that. And we'll go to finished. And so this is where we'd add other logic in the future for making it random or checking if they could actually be eligible to run away from the current battle. All right, so now that we have all of our state logic in place, let's go ahead and do some testing. So if we come over to our scene, uh, if we go ahead and go through the intro that we validated, let's go into our fight sequence. So now uh, we use our slash attack. The enemy should attack us. Uh, right now we have it set up so they'll knock us out. And so we'll see when we faint, we go to our post attack check method, our state, and then we go to the on enter method, we get our text, and now we transition to finished, and then we go ahead and restart our scene. Perfect. So what we should now be able to do is if we come up to where our monster's data is, let's go ahead and change their attack back to five, uh, but let's go ahead and bump ours to 15. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to validate that we go around more than one turn. Uh, so if we do our slash, we'll do battle on enter. We go ahead and display the text. We take our damage. And now we come back to uh, post attack a check. And because no one's fainted, we go to player input. And then so player on input is entered. And now we can select an attack again. And we repeat the process. Perfect. And now the enemy faints. And so we go into our post attack check. Because they fainted, we see our experience message. And we restart our scene. Perfect. All right, so now that we have our state machine up and working, uh, that actually brings an end to this video. Uh, in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on enhancing some of our player input functionality. So what we're going to do is in our battle menu, uh, we're going to add a cursor to uh, prompt the player to interact with the game. Uh, so that way they know they need to do something to force that next transition in our state machine. And we're going to go ahead and add support for where we don't have to actually have input from the player. Uh, so you can imagine that when we say, go Iguana Ignite, uh, we don't want the player to have to hit the space key. Instead, we would just go ahead and show their health bar and we transition to the battle menu um, after a set period of time. And then that way there's less input required from the player. Uh, so as a reminder, there is a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.